Good morning and welcome to quarantine watercolor lesson number two. The Neil Watson method. The Neil Watson method is a, a fun lesson I think you're gonna like. It's very loose, a lot of wet on wet. Uh, focuses on the vignettes a lot. It focuses on composition, focuses on contrast and uh, minimal use of color like duotone or uh, you know monochromatic uh, kind of the opposite of the more conservative and colorful Vern Swanson paintings that you have been working on this past week Neil Watson was a microsurgeon first uh, he worked on the hand um, and he worked in Britain his native country uh, for about 21 years in the medical field um, but then uh, at the age of 44, I think he moved to America, North Carolina, when he married an American. And despite the fact that he had been practicing for 21 years and uh, wrote books about microsurgery and even patented a surgical microsurgical approach that eliminated the need for rats in uh, laboratories, uh, North Carolina wouldn't grant him uh, a license to practice. So he took that uh, snub, as he called it, as an opportunity. Uh, as he said, uh, it was a signal for him, as Joseph Campbell would write, uh, to follow his bliss and be an artist, a teacher, and a writer, which is something he had been doing part-time over the years. So at 56, he quit medicine and just did that. He went and followed his passion and became this amazing watercolorist and drawer uh, and you know he's just using different tools he's no longer using the tools of, of microsurgery but now he's using paintbrushes and pens uh, eventually uh, at that point he moved to california and was a practicing artist in point richmond until his dying days he uh wasn't new to painting it wasn't like he just picked up a hobby later on in life um he was uh, an accomplished painter and drawer as a child and took a lot of art classes. And even in med school, he would participate in their annual art events. And he would, as he would say, sell paintings for petrol and beer and his fun money. Petrol being uh, what we would call gasoline. And um, so you could say he was a professional artist even when he was in med school. Um, but uh, most of his work focuses on Venice Paris and his hometown of Oxford. He loved the quality of, of light on Oxford stone. Um, this, and this despite living in California all that time. Uh, but his signature work, as far as we're concerned, is a book about Venice called Cercare Venezia in Italian. Uh, in English, and I do, they do have an English version of it, it's called In Search of Venice. In Search of Venice. And it features about a hundred of his paintings um, and sketches of, of Venice. And uh, it's in the syllabus, so you can find it. The ISBN number and all of that is in the syllabus if you want to try and find it, an old copy of it. Uh, it's about 20-year-old 20 20 book now, 22-year-old book. So um, it's kind of hard to find, but if you find it, it's a, it's a, it's a treasure. So he followed the, in the footsteps of Turner, Ruskin, and Monet, and other artists who went to Venice to um, you know, use that city, that beautiful city, as their muse. Uh, but he did it a little bit differently. Those, those artists would focus on kind of creating a three-dimensional representation of the city. Uh, he focused on the vignette, as I mentioned earlier in, the, in this discussion. So you might just see a couple of windows or a, 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 an archway or a, you know, a, a storefront facade, or something like that. Just always kind of showing the universe in a grain of sand. In addition to the architecture that uh, we're gonna explore uh, today, uh, he would also do landscape paintings and uh, life drawing. So living in California, he would go out to the state parks or out to the coast or up to the vineyards and draw from nature a lot. And also drawing the body, which would make sense uh, coming from a, a previous career as a, as a, a surgeon working on the body. 
Um, he also writes, no, wrote novels, uh, wrote a nonfiction book on art, wrote for art magazines, and uh, his other interests included sculling, flying, and car racing, race car driving. Unfortunately, he did die eventually from complications from a motorcycle accident that he had later in life. But he lives on uh, in the beautiful work that he's left behind. And so I'm going to share some of that with you today in the next video. We're going to talk about composition first, and then we're going to move into his style of painting. So look for that in the next video.